Hey guys, Mike here, my boy Charles. What's up? And this is real quick announcement. This is a live podcast where we don't we don't script this, and we had technical difficulties earlier, but I think we're good to go now. Uh, so thanks for everyone for being patient. Thanks for everyone for logging in for the second time, uh, so we can talk about this podcast. And today, Charles, we're talking about joint ventures, right? Joint ventures during a difficult time. So if you're in the real estate investment community, uh, joint ventures during this difficult time. How do you guys join venture? We're going to share a little bit about how we do it. Um, and the goal is just to provide value from, from us to you guys and you guys to us and everyone who's watching. So stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, we're back. So, again, guys, thanks for uh, staying tuned on this one. Uh, the first one, we did have technical difficulties, but we are back on board now. Charles, what's up, man? It's been a rough three weeks, man. It's been a rough three weeks, man. It's been a rough three Adapting, weeks. Adapting, man. Adapting. Adapting and changing. What Charles and I, we always discuss, believe it or not, guys, this is not scripted, so we always discuss what are we going to talk about today. And Charles and I pretty much agreed to joint ventures with what's going on, what tools do you have? What tools can you use to help you do joint ventures? Because uh, with all this going on, I think it's going to be beneficial for everyone. What do you think, Charles? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've been, uh, actually, this kind of has forced us out of our little, out of our bubble, you know, because we did start this podcast about a year ago. It's been a year now, right? Yeah, that one, I mean, it's episode 36, so 36 weeks or so. So, about a year ago, we started this podcast, just trying to reach out to people, see if we can bring some value to you guys, and we're trying to grow it. And uh, and so, about a, I say about a little more than a year ago, we also automated all our systems. So, the transition to working from home, having our people, you know, take care of themselves and, and, and primarily work from home, and we could actually come in here and work, but we want to make sure everybody's being safe, has um, really forced us to reach out and talk to a lot more people. And so right now, we've actually been talking to people from all over the country now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of those individuals were, were working on collaborating on some deals. Some have worked out, some have not worked out. But uh, I think it's the new wave, man. It's the, a lot of people have been doing virtual for a long time. We started doing virtual. But I really think the new way of doing business, man, is gonna be uh, not only doing virtual deals, but connecting and networking with people in the social media and, and the social, the social network man because you know you want it makes it a lot easier than trying to find someone in a certain city when you're connecting with people you can already you can usually find somebody pretty quickly man so so there's a uh, quite a few guys watching again charles and i are always appreciative uh, by you guys taking your time on this wednesday evening to uh, log on and just kind of hear about this podcast mm -hmm. what we want to share uh but more importantly what we want that everyone who's on here if you guys want to start dropping in questions Let's try to keep this subject about joint ventures. Uh, you know, how do joint ventures work? If you've done a joint venture before, maybe a story on a joint ventures that didn't go so good. Uh, maybe some stories on joint ventures that went well that if it didn't happen for that joint venture, the deal itself wouldn't happen. So we'll go ahead and give a few seconds for that to go on. But in the meantime, Charles, while they're doing that, what's one joint venture you want to recap on uh, that we've done so far? Well, you want to talk about the bad ones? <laughs> or you want to talk about the good ones? Yeah, let's go. Let's go with the good ones for now on how joint ventures could be beneficial. But then we'll kind of, hey, but don't forget it could turn bad. It could turn ugly. Why don't you talk about a good one, and I'm going to talk about an explosive one. And what do you mean by explosive? Well, you know, the one I told you, man, where you got to get everything documented, man. So we'll, I'll talk about that one. Yeah. Okay. Good one. But before we do that, I want to let everybody know. Last night we launched our second. Our second late night chat 
our second late night REI chat. I kicked it off, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. And we're last night, we did it again. I think we're going to do this on Tuesdays, right? Yeah, I don't know about every, I don't know about every Tuesday, man. No, every we, other Tuesday. Every man. other Tuesday or once the first Tuesday of the month because... And it was, uh, we didn't get off to like almost 3, 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning, man. We started off, it's a, it's a late night, guys. So we start off at 12. Thinking maybe kick, uh, maybe maybe I'll bring that up to 11. But we started off at 12. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, man, I mean, at midnight, there's quite a few of you guys that are yeah. still on there. And, uh, yeah. Man, there's a lot of people up at midnight till 2, 3 in the morning. A lot of night owls. That's when, I, that's, when, that's when I flourish, man. I'm in the middle of the night working. So yeah, man, we were up till 3.30 just... You know, there were there some people that fell off there about the last 45 minutes, but Frank. people, um, man, really just collaborating, man, talking about deals, sharing ideas. Um, you know, of course, we're going to be talking to some of those people later today about possibly doing some deals with them. Uh, and these deals are nowhere near Texas. They're in different, uh, different states. But, um, I mean, if you learn this business, if you learn this business, you can do this business anywhere. You know, uh, you can do it in any state and I think almost any country. You just got to know, you, you know, you definitely want to look into the laws and the guidelines, regulations as to what you can do in certain states. But definitely, I mean, I, we talked to uh, we talked to Jeff today in Oklahoma. I'm going to be talking to Young Guns in, in Hawaii later today. Um, we definitely want to JV with anybody. And this, this is what we're talking about. If you already, an, if you're already an experienced investor, and, and you're not looking at JV with anybody, that's totally cool. I mean, we're experienced and we're doing our own deals. But what we find is that uh, we can share our knowledge, man, and our experience. Now, we can share, Mike and I do this a lot, and we can share our uh, something with you that lets you go do a deal and you go kick ass and you, you, you make a lot of money, more power to you, man. We love that. But if, if you're just starting out, man, and you're you're trying to lock out some deals, you don't have, you know, guidance, or, or you haven't really met somebody in your area that can, you know, that you can turn to, then we're gonna make ourselves accessible, and and you know we're gonna JV with some people, man, that we can uh, not only help, but uh, help close some deals, and that's what we're gonna be. That's what we're talking about, and that's not just here in San Antonio. We're JVing with people here in San Antonio. Uh, there, are some people are helping us sell our deals. And we're JVing with them to help sell their deals. We're collaborating with other individuals, other groups here in San Antonio to see if we can uh, push the ball. And the reason that's important is because, man, if this thing, like we talked last week, if it tightens up, if it tightens up and it gets bad or it keeps going, you're going you're gonna to want to have a little network of people you can talk to, man, or turn to. And so there's, um, with the, I mean, San Antonio, I think it's pretty heavy when it comes to wholesaling. There's a lot of... There's a lot of companies, there's a lot of lone wolves, there's a lot of uh, big timers that's here in San Antonio. And Charles and I, along with those individuals, uh, some of the you guys are on here now, we're trying to create something on the back end. Uh, I really want to keep that in a back pocket. Let's see if it succeeds. And if it does, we'll share it with you guys and maybe you guys can try it in your local market for sure. Uh, so speaking about JVs, joint ventures. JV, joint ventures, what is a joint venture? Joint ventures like I got a contract. Uh, I got the, the seller for the property, but another person has the buyer, um, and that's very basic. It can come to be very creative, it can be uh, money, it can be private financing. What we're doing, Charles and I, we focus on wholesaling deals and not properties. We wholesale problems and not, and not properties. So we can be the more creative you can uh, and partner up with someone else. That's the JV. So speaking about JVs. Can I elaborate that? Yeah, real quick. The speaking about JVs, the first one is Valentine Love. Valentine said he called you, man. You're just a busy guy, and he's trying to do JV deals with us, man. So make sure you give Valentine a call. Wow, I'm sorry, brother, man. As a matter of fact, I mean, let me PM you, man. I, you have my number, brother, my main number, because my phone has been blowing up. Seriously, man, I've been on the phone. I wake up at seven, seven, by seven thirty, man. I'm all day long just on the phone, uh, emails on the phone. Um, my days are usually not ending till about 2.30. Sometimes I'm, all, I'm up till three, I'm sleeping like four hours a day. It seems like we're busier now than we were busier when, in the office. Here when, in the office. when we were here in the office. And I think a, a big part of that is because we've, we've uh, actually connected with a lot of people around the country that, uh, man, they just really want some help. And, and, uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, we're not, 
some some of the individuals we're just telling them how to do it if we can get on the phone with you just real quick all we care about is can you show us a little bit of love but if we're actually gonna you know work with you that's a little bit different so Val you know I hold you in great esteem man so my apologies to you brother um, so he does have your number so shoot him your number Charles um, so you can get that going uh, everyone else is watching guys let's let's uh, be what's the word I'm looking for let's be interactive Let's, let's talk about joint ventures. If quite a few of you guys watching, let's not be shy. Let's ask a question. Joint venture, what are your thoughts on it? What are our thoughts on it? What type of transaction have you done uh, when it comes to joint venture? And uh, you know, was it a positive uh, positive outcome or a negative outcome? We had quite a few people on here. Emily's on here. Shout out to Emily. Uh, saying hi, guys. Mike Quintanilla with the Hilco team. Uh, I know when it comes to Hilco, Charles and I and the HPJ squad, we've closed deals with Hilco, and Hilco has closed deals with us. Uh, we had the buyer, they had the seller, or vice versa. So we make things happen. So uh, Mike can attest to that he's on here, and I think he has a, a deal he's working too, right? That big deal. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can see how Joint Venture works. Uh, Nation's on here. Shout out to Nation. Nation saying it's going to be picking up a contract this week. So Nation, I know you got a full time business that you're running uh, besides real estate, man. So you already got to do a Joint Venture, man, by all means. Uh, feel free to reach out to one of us or anyone who's watching. Yeah, so one of the things that, um, like for example, I got a uh, you know a good guy that we spoke to in Oklahoma. We we uh, you know we just met him last night by uh, doing this late night chat, and I uh, met another gentleman out of Hawaii. Uh, met another gentleman out of, out of Sacramento, California. These are all good guys, you know. And, and we're you know if we can help them, we're gonna do that. But vice versa, the way I feel about JVs, you know, if somebody's bringing a deal, everybody's helping each other out. You know, they're helping you, you're helping them. You get, you come together and make this happen. So for us, you know, what we're willing to do is we're willing to share with you guys how we do stuff and new ideas. Uh, for example, we're fixing to do a webinar. It's going to be a free webinar. We're not charging for this webinar. It's going to be uh, what we call spreading with a reverse wholesale transaction. Now... There's a lot of moving parts to that type of deal. There's a lot of moving parts, but if you accomplish it, you're gonna be able to collect your wholesale fees uh, on the top, then and, and usually we do it on the bottom. So what I mean by that is usually you're calculating the ARV, the percentage, the repair, the rehab, and then your wholesale fee and then the offer. It's just creating a transaction and scaling it up and collecting your wholesale, your wholesale fee on top. So any of you guys who are interested in that, you definitely want to pay attention to the association when we launch that in the next week or so and or shoot us a PM and uh, let's make that happen. We'd love to get you on there. So let's answer a question and I think it comes to the perfect timing. So Ricky Miller says, what are your thoughts on joint ventures that are not in the San Antonio area? And Rick, Ricky, right when you answer that question, we have uh, Roxanne Mendoza who just logged on. That Roxanne, if you can uh, put a comment or uh, say hi so people know where you're at. So Roxanne Mendoza is on here. Uh, Roxanne Mendoza is the escrow officer for Alamo Title. Uh, she closes quite a few of our deals. And I'm glad she's on here because she can attest to um, what I'm about to share with you, Ricky. Uh, when it comes to what are your thoughts on joint ventures that are not in the San Antonio area. So when it comes to virtual deals, it's always good to have boots on the ground. Whether it's El Paso, Houston, Corpus, whatever the case is. Now we've done deals in Houston and Dallas. Corpus, El Paso, Laredo, Eagle Pass, all the good stuff, Odessa. And what I, what I was getting at is with Roxanne being a San Antonio title company, even though the deals are in Houston or El Paso or, or Corpus, Laredo, we still send all of our contracts uh, here in San Antonio. So the title company is controlled by us, uh, by a known title officer, knows how we like to do business, knows the wholesale business, very important. Controlled by us. The deal is that we do a joint venture, right? It's controlled by us. The deal is that we do a joint venture. It's controlled by us that we do a joint venture deal uh, with our local title officer. Now, when it comes to joint ventures, it's probably best if you work with someone in that market. So, for example, when we do a deal in Houston, uh, we got boots on the ground in Houston. They're going to be more more adapting to the, the market over there, uh, to the neighborhoods. So, here in San Antonio, you know, if I told someone in Eagle Pass, hey, man, I got a deal here in Beacon Hill in San Antonio, it's probably won't make that much sense to them. Same thing when it comes to deals in Houston or El Paso. So, uh, Rick, to answer your question, man, typically I want to say about a good 80% of the time, 75% of the time, if it's a deal in a different market, 
uh, more than likely it's probably gonna be a joint venture deal with someone who's there, someone who already has buyers, someone who knows the real players. But of course, the goal is always to keep 100% of the profit, so we will push for it, but at the end of the day, we just want the seller's problem taken care of, we want to close the deal, and move on to the next one. So just let me, let me uh, expand on that, guys. Whenever you're, whether you're running a one-man show, a two-man team, you know, small team, or large team, so, you know, we're not a huge team, but we're a pretty good sized team, you know, and, um, you know, some of our people have success, some don't, that's just, that's just the way the ball rolls, you know, uh, everybody's different, but this COVID thing that's going on, just like what happened in 2008, you can shrink, you can shrink from what's going on, or you can meet it head on. So we have no choice, man. We have to push through. Um, you know, we, we there's no you cannot allow yourself to 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 be like, oh man, what's going on? You got to push through because you don't know you don't know what what um, what's ahead of you, and what may be ahead of you is, is is a great deal. So for example, I think in the last three weeks, our our JV our JV deals have like grown by twenty five. 30% maybe more and they're not all here in Texas they're in different parts of the country uh, some of those deals were just consulting uh, some of those deals were actually have skin in the game and we're actually pushing you know and then uh, and, and, and that's what we're sharing with you guys man you need to get out there you need to you need to start talking to people you need to you know if, if you're taking care of business on your own rock and roll bless you man but my experience from the 2008 man Unless you're, unless you're, unless you're, unless you're networking, and you're, and you're uh, be able, to, you're able to utilize other people's resources, man, it's gonna get hard. If this thing, if this thing continues. So let's talk about something fun, man. Talk about a good JV deal that we did, and then I'm gonna talk about a, a nightmare, a, a nightmare deal that we did. A good JV deal that we did, man. Which one? There's so many, right, Charles? Pick so one. Man, so How, me, why, uh, why you think? Let me tell you guys yeah, about a, let me take Let's the, do that. Let me tell you guys about a bad one. Let me do a bad one so I can kind of calm it down with a good one. Yeah. So years ago, we did a uh, JV deal. Actually, man, this was a. Did I talk about one that I did? Yeah, I did a JV deal years, years ago, man. And um, what happened was I, I went ahead and put up the money and and. Uh, I let someone take take the deal down into their name, and uh, it was actually two guys. One was very cool. The other one, uh, you know, I thought was cool. And uh, we uh, we bought the home fairly cheap, and we started putting work into it. And I used my, you know, I was letting them use my credit cards to get material and stuff. And actually, my wife and I. This is years ago, man. This is pre-crash. Uh, my wife and I actually went out there. This is back when. Uh, I was, I was getting my hands dirty, and we, you know, she wanted to go out there and experience a flip. So we started busting out, you know, the the, the, the tile and taking on the doors. And man, my wife really put some work in, and, and and we were getting it done. And then what happened was, you know, things got a little crazy, and and uh, with the market and everything was stagnant for a while. But I wasn't on paper, man. I was not on paper. My money was invested where I was on paper, and uh, so I was, I was calling the individual to find out, hey, when is this deal closed? When is this, when is this deal closed? And he kept saying to me, hey, it hasn't closed. It hasn't closed. Mind you, back then I was more involved on the on the mortgage side than I was on the real estate side. I was doing investments, but I, it wasn't really my thing, you know, to be involved in the actual traditional real estate uh, side of things. And man, that house sold, dude. I didn't find out for eight months later, man. Hmm. Eight months later. And, and I was, you know, I was, I was calling every other month and just, just, just relying on someone to tell me that, yeah, the house hadn't sold. And uh, so the house sold, man, and uh, they collected the funds. And it took me, it took me a minute. You know, I actually got my, I actually got, when I found out, I actually got my money pretty quick. But it took me a minute to find out. And, and I got this close to losing my investment uh, on that, on that deal. And I, I think we had about... I think we had about thirty thousand dollars invested in the deal. It's not a lot of money, but still, you know, the, that and the profit. These guys were willing to walk away with it, and and uh, well, at least one of them was. And uh, 
you know, I, I had to I had to get real serious with them, and I ended up getting my money. I ended up getting my profit. And that was a good thing, but a lot of people don't get their money. I've had some, I've heard some horror stories in the last few weeks. A lot of people don't get their money. So I say to you guys, if you're going to do a JV deal, unless it's someone that you really know and you really trust, get it on paper, man. Um, young lady that I spoke to, I saw her post, uh, I saw her make a post that she had about $100,000 to invest. And uh, I just reached out to her and I said, hey, take that post down and let me tell you why. Um, because she started getting a lot of individuals, you know, commenting and saying, hey, I, I, I got this property, I got this, I got that. You can't do that, man. You, one, don't put yourself out there like that. So you need to talk to people that, that you're meeting, that you're vetting, you're trusting. Second, get it on paper, unless you can trust a person, uh, you've done business with them before, uh, that you know that you can go off sheet, what we call off sheet or PLC, paid out of closing. Um, and we have a few of those individuals here in San Antonio that we work with, that we've done work with before. But man, get it on paper, because there's a lot of bad apples out there, man, they can, they can run with your money, and, and then what are you gonna do? So that was, that was kind of a nightmare, a deal. I ended up getting my money, because it's me, <laughs> just kidding guys. But it was, I got real close, man. I almost got screwed, man. I almost got screwed on our, on our investment and the profit. So that's one way, I mean, to be for sure, it could be negative. Uh, like Charles said, Emily put a, a comment on here. I uh, said joint ventures are super powerful. Both parties need to be loyal to each other and the execution was trying to be accomplished. So that's uh, definitely uh, coincides with what Charles' story is. Uh, on, on this side, the good side, I mean, we've closed deals in um, El Paso. Uh, we got a, a gentleman out there by the name of Chad uh, who, who does really good work with us. He's, he's, he's like Emily said, like Lloyd, we trust him. Uh, we've done deals with him. Whether we buy a deal uh, that he has and we join venture together, or we actually get a deal in El Paso and he would come with a bar because he's in that market. Uh, so we did that one. Uh, that's always helpful. We do a lot of them, man. Yeah, it, we do, uh, Houston, our, Ricardo's on Houston. Yeah. I mean, you think you're having no brain fart right now. No, I don't have no brain fart. Yeah. Right. So we do a lot of it, man, with our own people, dude. So our own people, like here at HPHS. Oh, yeah, that's different, man. That's well, let me, let me Joint talk. Venture is another, another party, man. Let me talk, man. Joint Venture is another party, man. What I'm saying is this, man. Like, for well, some of our people here, some of them are coming up. Some of them have success. Some have more success than others. Here's the thing, man. There's there's some uh, some of our people that are already, you know, that they're, pretty well, they're pretty well off. Some of them have made the jump to another level, and they're they're doing well now. And some of them are still struggling. That's the fact. But what we like to do is we like to get our people involved. So we do joint ventures with our own people. Why? Because we want our people to grow, man. We want to give them the opportunity. So we're joint ventures on some apartment complexes. We're joint ventures on some properties that we've flipped. You know, on some, you know, some of our guys have bought some properties with us. Um, we're fixing to do a small apartment complex that some more people are going to get involved. You know, um, so so that's one way you can join venture with your own sphere of influence, your own people, man. And then of course, like Mike said, you know, we join venture with other individuals from different cities, man. And and uh, that's what we're talking about, building your network because you don't know. See, for one, one, your experience. I'm talking to you, you experienced guys out here. So you experienced people, man. And a lot of a lot of you guys that I know that are on here, I know you guys are humble and you guys are good guys. There's something you have that's valuable, man. And what that is is the knowledge of taking deals down. You've experienced the mistakes. You know what to stay away from. You know what's a good deal, what's not a good deal. That right there in itself is valuable. And and then you know you. Once you, once you start networking with individuals, other individuals who are just starting out and maybe need a little bit of guidance, those are great guys to, to partner up with because they're wanting to learn the ropes. They're bringing value to the table and you're bringing value to the table. And you, what we found is we end up doing one or two, three deals with these individuals and now they're off and running and every once in a while they'll still call us back and say, hey, I got this deal. But that's a good way to, to pick up uh, some JV deals, man. Just sharing and helping somebody out with the transaction. That doesn't mean you don't have to put skin in the game. I mean, we always put skin in the game. There's there's never been a deal, I don't think, there's never been a deal where we have said, even on the consulting ones, there's never been a deal where we have said, hey, 
you put up all the money. Oh yeah. And and uh, we're just gonna t we're just gonna tell you what to do. We've never even done that. Never. Even if we're consulted on a deal, we're still bringing something to the table because it's only fair, man, that we have skin in the game. You know, right? Yeah. So speaking of joint ventures, the next comment comes from a, a good friend of ours, Robert Ibada. Uh, he's saying, "What's up?" Now, Robert, for he does uh, sub two wraps. Um, and our office brought a buyer for one of his deals not too long ago. Um, so that helps us, helps one of our buyers to get into a property. Um, it helps Robert to close that deal, so shout out to Robert. Uh, Valentine says he has that fourplex. So Adrian's on here, Adrian Salazar, and he's saying, what's up guys? Adrian, I think your your reason of a joint venture may be a little different than everyone else, so I don't know if you wanna, if you had a moment, Adrian, and if you're still on here, to put a comment on joint venturing when it comes to apartments. So put that on there, Kelsey's on here. Uh, let's all hustle together. So, Adrian with the apartment? Adrian, yeah. First of all, Adrian, I want to say what's up, brother. Congratulations on the complex that you and Marisa did. Multiple complex. Yeah, well, the new one. Yeah, the that's new one. beautiful, man. Much love, man. You know, you guys, you know, you guys, you guys have mad respect, man. Uh, earlier we were talking about Roxanne, so she's on here again. Roxanne saying that she does close any deals uh, any county in Texas, which we just closed one recently in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce it to be honest with you. Weiner, Weiner, Texas? Weiner? Weiner or Weiner? Weiner? One of those, man. We bought a house, Charles and I. We bought a house in Weiner, Weiner Texas. And um, it's literally in the middle of nowhere, but we bought it for so cheap. Uh, it should it should make sense. So Roxanne, help us close that deal. So if you guys need someone, you guys can use Roxanne Rogers on here. Oh. Uh, turn up the hustle quick. Yeah, I do want to say something, guys. Any of you guys out there hunting, and pounding pound the street, man. If you like, we're not trying to buy land at retail. Can I say this, man? Huh? Mm -hmm. We're not looking to buy land at retail, so so I'm not looking for that. But uh, if you got if you got uh, the lead on uh, on some land, you know, especially you know, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen acres or something like that, and we can pick those up at a discount, and um, and you have them. And we can pick them up at a good discount. We're willing to JV with you on those deals. I can't say exactly what we're doing. Um, I will say it on a webinar that we're going to actually promote. Um, but um, yeah, man, give us a call, and uh, we'll bring you into the deal one or two ways. One, if you want to get paid and walk away, that's fine. Uh, if we take the deal down. Two, if you want to be part of the deal, then your sweat equity will will eventually get you paid, right? Sweat equity always pays, man. Uh, who else we got? Jay Taylor said that she likes to team up all the time. Valentine, any country? Uh, if I said country, I, it's my mistake. I mean, any county in Texas. Any country, Mike? County, county, any county okay. in Texas. I mean, we do deal. I mean, we. I'm okay. always trying okay, to. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Who said that? Who said that? It was Valentine. Uh, I guess I must, I must, I must have said <laughs> any country, but uh, well, any county is what we're looking. At. Well, we do guys a little bit of credit about that. Let me go ahead and let me uh, let me go ahead and say this. We did years ago. Joint venture with somebody who was uh, not from uh, not from Afghanistan, but they were in Afghanistan and they had been there for about eight years as a contractor. So does that count? I guess. I mean, we close deals with the sellers in Mexico. We have closed deals with people in Mexico, man. Where we where we've actually JV with them. We've actually JV with them, man. We yeah. paid we paid them, and uh, the deals wouldn't have got done without them, man. So I guess I guess maybe that kind of qualifies for. Uh, JV with a few people. Yeah, good. So Jeremy's on here. Shout out to Jeremy who's on here who's uh, recently connected with us. I think he's the one that's in um, Hawaii. Yeah, we so. got Jeremy. We're going to be talking tonight, brother. We're hoping uh, anything we can do to help you out, man. Any ideas, any credit financing that we can share with you. And it's like I said, man, even if we just do a consult, to be honest with you, man, I just want to, I just, at this point, I, I would love to say that we helped out on a deal in Hawaii, man. We can join venture. That'd be even better. Yeah. Yeah, I like Jeremy, man. He's, he's yeah, really he's involved, man. He's really involved, man. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to Jeremy. And Valentine's on there. He did meant to say county, so it wasn't me that messed up. So I appreciate that, Valentine. Uh, so what else, guys? So you guys are still on here, man. Let's, let's talk. Let's interact. Joint ventures, good good experiences, bad experience. Uh, what does it work with you? How does it work with you? Uh, do you buy deals from other wholesalers? Do you consider that a joint venture deal? While well, you guys get a few minutes to put in your comments, I want to I wanna make a quick announcement real quick, guys. Uh, if you guys haven't done so yet, make sure you join Home Buying Home Center Association on Facebook. It's just, well, we're going to do something a little different now. Now we're going to go live, uh, probably so, right, Charles? Live from the association versus solutions. 
Uh, so if you guys can help us out with that, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. On Instagram, it's at Mike underscore HPHS and at Charles underscore HPHS. Make sure you guys do so on that. Um, and most importantly, guys, is the association. Uh, we've always been going live on Home Buy Homes and Solutions. And that's the page, uh, that's the company itself that actually buys and sells houses. So we're going to try to go ahead and shift into this market. I think, to be honest with you, now that we made this shift, uh, a lot of people were following Home Bottom Sun Solutions, and they weren't part of Home Bottom Sun Association. So I think the numbers are a little lower than usual, but I think you, once we get this up and go for a few weeks, the numbers should go back up. Uh, Charles and I are always providing value. Uh, we make multiple calls a day, uh, multiple Zoom calls. Uh, as soon as I get a little free time, I know when Charles gets a little free time, we're always open to answering any questions. Uh, for some reason, it's always a lot about creative stuff and always about sub two stuff, which is fine. We're open to answer anything. The only thing that we're asking in return, guys, is that you guys can help us grow the association. Uh, if you guys, not now, but when we're done uh, with this podcast, if you guys can go to the association and invite people to, uh, to join this group, it will really, really help us and will really be appreciative and beneficial to not just us, but to you guys. Uh, we found a deal, let's just say uh, Eagle Pass. I had a deal in Eagle Pass, uh, and that was in some type of joint venture with the association. I went to the association, and I asked who's buying an Eagle Pass. And when I said who buying the Eagle Pass, somebody actually responded to my message, sent me a DM, uh, and we closed that deal in Eagle Pass. So that's how the association can help. I know we got people from Hawaii, California, people on here from Canada, uh, Atlanta, New York, South Carolina. So if we got deals in virtual markets, guys, let's use the association uh, to do so. And that's part of the reason we decided to start building it. Uh, you know, Michael and I, we were late to social media. Um, we were just out here grinding and pounding with our team, but we decided to uh, start building Home Items and Association. And I'm not going to say it's, 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 it's been a little painstaking, right? Because we didn't really know a lot about mm -hmm. social media. But the primary goal to build Home Items so Selling Association online, and 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 eventually we're going to actually going to launch it physically here in San Antonio, is because our our goal and our dream is to bring investors from all over. And they can connect on on online. They can connect online, and 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 be able to say, "Hey, I need somebody over here." And you guys can do that with Facebook too. I mean, we're not we're not uh, blind to that. But if we can create relationships here on this association that we're that we're trying to build, then uh, I think that people can collaborate a little bit easier, get to know each other. Um, you know, and we're we're what we're also looking to do is uh, build groups within the group. So, you know, maybe we have Group A that just likes creative financing, uh, you know, Group B just likes to do wholesaling. So you guys don't have to go through the whole association trying to find somebody. You can just, hey, you know, these three, four hundred people just like wholesale. You know, these three, four hundred people just like dealing in California. So that's what we're in the midst of doing. And we just want to grow it, man. We want to see what we can do. We want to see uh, what kind of value we can provide to you guys at some point in the very near future. Um, we're going to also be bringing, we're going to, of course, we're going to be doing free webinars uh, of all things that we do. We're also going to bring on individuals that uh, specialize in different stuff, you know, attorneys, title people, uh, individuals who are from different states, different cities, who are causing, you know, who are not causing damage, but doing damage in the REI world. And so anything you guys can do to help us, it's not ours, it's for everybody. Uh, we're also looking uh, to pick up some moderators. Who, uh, who would be interested. Those moderators who decide to become moderators and help us grow the association, this is what you're gonna get in return. One, um, we're gonna do closed webinars with you uh, at least once, once a week for an hour, most likely on Saturdays or Sundays, and that's where you can ask us about all things that we do. And, uh, and, and we'll be able to you know, help you, maybe on your deals, <coughs> not only that, we're going to be launching some uh, webinars that are very intricate webinars that will also be closed and you'll always have access to those. And you'll have access to us directly. Not that we're any superstars, we're not, we're by far not. I mean, I don't even look, I'm kind of ugly to be honest with you. I don't even know what my wife's doing with me. But, uh, right? Right. Huh? Right. What do you mean right, man? Right. Continue. So, what I'm saying is, man, if you need help, brother, we're willing to help, man. Not only everybody, right, but the people who help us um, build this thing and, and get into this closed group. 
we definitely want to provide some serious value to you guys. So exchange the value, man, for whoever's interested. So whoever's interested, please uh, send myself, Charles, or maybe uh, Frank Tovar a personal message, and we'd love to uh, connect with you guys. Uh, Emily says she has a help. She needs a deal. Let me read that, man. She has a deal, then she needs help structuring them. So by all means, Emily, of course, you know you can always reach out to myself or Charles. Uh, Valentine says he has a lot of bad experiences when it comes to joint ventures. However, he has done a deal in Canada. So, there you go. So, question. Uh, Rick Miller with Joint Ventures. Instead of finding an buyer with their help, have you also maybe just purchased the property outright, put it on the MLS, and then I guess keep 70% of the profit and the other 30 to who gave you the deal? So, pretty much a wholesale deal. Wasn't sure if it was what you guys do or what you guys think so from what I got Ricky is I guess someone sent you the deal um, I mean let me read that one more time uh, question with joint venture instead of finding an end buyer with your help have you also maybe just purchased the property outright put it on the MLS and I guess keep 70% of the profit and then the other 30 uh, dispersed to whoever gave you the deal yeah I think that in my opinion Charles you can chime in uh, but I think in my opinion as the investor if you're the one that's gonna purchase the deal Ricky it's up. It's your call, right? Would it make more sense to pay him out outright in the beginning if the wholesaler is only asking for five grand, or you say, "Hey, wholesaler, let me save on cost, not pay you the five grand. Uh, let me purchase the property, put it on the MLS, and I'll pay you a percentage on that deal." Now, believe it or not, we've done something like that before, haven't we? We've done deals before where, hey, do you want X amount of wholesale fee now, or would you prefer Y amount of wholesale fee once we're actually completed with the project? I mean, we were just talking about one like that. I, I can't say with who because it's a private deal, but, uh, you know, there's a, a, a couple, actually a couple of deals were brought to ours. We're considering one where um, the property's already in pristine condition. Um, market took a tank. The guy's over leveraged. And um, so there's no way he can t continue to uh, pay his, uh, pay his, uh, his mortgage, and it's not. A, this, is, this is an investment mortgage or an investment loan, rather. And so, yeah, man, we're gonna jump into that deal, dude. We're gonna do. Uh, we're either gonna do a sub two on that deal and and uh, work out a deal with uh, with his uh, lender, or we're gonna do a net listing and work out a deal with his lender. So, what ends up happening? On the, see, let me let me share something with you guys. I know Mike don't like. I know you don't like me talking about this stuff, man. We'll see. But there's a lot more to to this than just selling properties. So I mentioned this I mentioned this a couple of times already and, and uh, some people have hit me up about it. But for example, on this particular deal, we don't want to go on title on this deal. I don't want to buy this deal. I don't want to drop, you know, a hundred some thousand dollars, I think it's like hundred and seventy thousand dollars to buy this deal. What I'd rather do is tell his lenders, say, hey, look, what are you looking to get on this deal? Okay, let's do a uh, net listing on this deal, which Mike is not fond of. Let's do a net listing on this deal. I guarantee your funds, you know, uh, excuse me, not guarantee your funds. What I guarantee is the next four to five, six months of payments. I'm willing to drop, excuse me, we are willing to drop 46 months of payments on this transaction that we're not going to take title to for the opportunity to make what is it about 40 50,000 yeah. you know so for the opportunity to make about 40 45 now if we don't if we don't do the deal if we end up not closing on the deal for whatever reason yeah you know I, I you know we, we just dropped you know four to six months of payments and that hasn't been agreed on yet what I'm getting at is one, we're not we're not going to cash this property out, so this ticket's around uh, somewhere around one what, 165 or something. Mm -hmm. We're not cashing it out. Two, we're not going on title, so we're not we're not uh, the the back end has to be worked out with the with with the guy holding title right now. So that that's something else. It's a little more complicated. I don't want to go into it right now, but we don't want to change um, we don't want to change the, we don't want to we don't want to change the chain of title. Because we got to start at day one, and and the opportunity to sell FHA is gonna be gone, so that's a little more complicated, and and we I don't mind doing a Zoom if we got if I get enough people who are interested in that we can do a Zoom on that and talk about how we can structure that. But the objective here is 
that we're 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 gonna get into zero. We're gonna say, hey, let's agree on four to six months of payments. Give us the opportunity. So you're getting paid. We're paying them for the opportunity to sell their deal. They want nothing with. They're not in the business of holding property. So that, so that's a, that's a really really advanced way of JVing with not only a regular person but a lender, and also JVing with the guy who's you know for whatever reason is not able to uh, is not able to meet his obligations. So everybody wins. We win. The original guy wins. The lender wins. You see. So what I just explained to you right now. It's, it's, a, it's a complicated JV transaction, but we're not buying anything, man. We're not buying a property, right? Right. We're not technically selling our property. We're getting into a deal that we have an opportunity to just move paper around. And so that's a complicated JV deal, I would say, right? Yeah, uh, it's complex to the max. Huh? If you guys were keeping up with that, it's, a com it's complex to the max, but it is a joint venture, one way or another. In a nutshell, this guy wants to kind of give us his house, and he wants to give us the headache. We step to it, we list it, but we we but, joint venture with his lender and to the seller himself yeah. to get him out of this sticky situation that he wants to be out of. But we don't step two is 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 a uh, is an option. It is an option. But here it says we get creative, baby. Can I say it? Yeah. We get creative, man. And I'm like, hey, why are we gonna change the title? And Mike and me were talking about this. We're like, let's keep title in place. Now that part is a little more complicated, guys. So, so if you want to know about that, we need, you need to reach out to us. But let's keep title in place. Let's do a JV deal, and and uh, we'll give the lender what he wants at at a discount, right? Because we're doing a discount, right? We're not mm -hmm. paying the full payment. We're gonna give the payment what they want, and what they want is to collect monthly. Why? Because nobody's getting foreclosed right now. And if nobody's getting foreclosed right now, that means you probably ain't gonna get, be able to foreclose on somebody for quite a while. And, 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 if, and if you're holding paper that you need to collect money on, that's going to get difficult. So, so that's, that's a complicated JV transaction. I think. So that's for sure, guys. Uh, who is out here? Uh, William Baker. So he has a lot of leads here in San Antonio that he's trying to get to them all. Uh, William. William, what's up, man? Yeah, William. What's up, baby, man? I didn't tell you to call me, man. I reached out to, I reached out to him the other day. And uh, I'm not sure if he sent me anything, Will, but I've been checking my inbox every day, seeing, man, if I, did I get anything from Will? Nothing. They will send me anything, nothing. Send send those things, brother, man. We, we definitely want to work with you, man. You know, we got a lot of respect for Will, man. Yeah, it goes to Will, and that goes to anyone else who's watching, guys. Uh, we always want to work with anyone and everyone who's willing to, to work with us and, and do a, a good JV transaction. Uh, Jeremy's on here. We guys are doing a great job connecting through HPHS. Valentine texts you. Uh, and there's a form down here that, that Frank created. It's the pin comment. The pin comment is... Uh, HPHS Joint Adventure. If you guys take a minute, if you guys are open to doing a joint venture, you can always click that button and, and fill that part out um, and see how we can help you with the JV deal. Uh, so that's always good to do. Uh, William says that his VAs are, are blowing out the water, man, and he's getting a bunch of leads. So, um, yeah, William, of course, shut us up, man. Uh, and Gustavo's on here. So, speaking of Gustavo, he just logged on. Gustavo says, What's up, guys? Gustavo is actually out of Austin. Um, and he created a pretty good relationship with one of our key players here by the name of Manny Cash. Um, and Gustavo and Manny, um, Gustavo's good at getting deals here in San Antonio, even though he's in a different market. And Gustavo, you missed the front end of the conversation, but uh, even though Austin's up the road, it's still a big difference when you go to a different city. Um, my example earlier was if I told Gustavo, hey man, Beacon Hill's a hot area, and that may be the same thing somewhere in Austin that I'm not too familiar with. Um, but yeah, so Gustavo is um, is the key role. That it's actually a perfect example uh, of what he does uh, with us. So he just says right there on another comment that he partners with us on a on a contract that he just got yesterday. Uh, it's the second one that he's done with us. Um, so definitely, joint ventures is a way to go. Um, he got the deal. Uh, we're bringing the buyer, current title, or whatever we do. Um, so that's definitely what we, what we want to do, guys. Uh, Mike Webb, I hate I cannot log on last night, um, but how did it go? Um, how did you open up that conversation with the lender? So, on that question, Charles, how do we open up that conversation with the lender? It's kind of here, here's the thing, man. It's kind of a funny story. Yeah, here. well, I, I can't, I can't. There's no way that I can disclose the lender, brother. But we've been at this a long time, and it's relationships, man. Relationships, networking. 
And, and, and the most important thing is, is doing what you say you're going to do. Now, don't get me wrong, man. There's some times where you miss a phone call. Uh, I blew a call to Dave, man. It was something very important today, and I apologize. I said, man, I apologize, man. We're just super swamped, man. So um, that's just going to happen. What I'm talking about is this. I'm not talking about blowing a call or blowing a meeting, which there are some people that take that shit to heart, man. You blow a meeting with somebody, dude, and they, they don't even want to talk to you. What I'm talking about is this, man, is networking, creating relationships, and, and, and when you get the shot to prove to someone that you're about it and you're gonna make shit happen, then make shit happen. Don't 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 take on something that you can't take down and then you're gonna have egg on your face. You know that's 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 the thing man. So for us we have pretty good relationship with some private lenders, some uh some hard money lenders and uh they know what we do. We've sold properties for them, we've sold we've done properties with them, uh we've made people money. And so that's that's how uh, that's you know they, we get approached with that stuff, but when we first started out, we had a good little track record going on. We approached them and we said, "Hey, Mike, we've been doing some business together. You see what we do. You've gotten to know us. And um, how about let me know when you got a problem. Let me know when you got a deal that's tanking, or that someone's tanking on you." And if you need some help, let us help, man. You know what we do, and and we do that with about six different, uh, you know, uh, hard money lenders. There's there's four of them. They're out of state lenders, um, but they're here in town. And sometimes they'll send they'll send us a bone. We call it a bone because it is a bone. Anytime you get a free deal, it's a bone. Um, they get something from us. We're getting something from them. Everybody wins. We do that with our private investors. Let me tell you something. With our private investors, that's another thing that we're really working really hard right now to raise capital because with our new was Mike and I we did we did this before but it would it takes a long time and 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 and, and uh, to do the to do the research because things are going so fast now you know people can order data and by the time you fucking research everybody's calling that person but we have our team working from home they're still making calls but we've showed them a new system that Mike and I used to do and that's what the credit financing was a reverse wholesaling transaction but to do those transactions, you got to bring in private investors, and and there's a way to do those deals where you collect your wholesale fee on top and not on the bottom. Um, so we're we're in the mode of raising capital, which is also JV and was was deals. We just had a beautiful conversation with some people from up north yesterday. We're hoping that's going to pan out. If it does, we're going to be man. If that pans out, dude, we're going to be on just full blown, full blown taking deals down and, and, and I invite all of you guys uh, I invite all you guys if that takes place and we put the word out I invite all of you guys to reach out to us so that we can show you how we're doing these deals so we can make some money together and uh, not only that I invite any of you guys who are looking to get into uh, working deals especially those who know us to have a conversation with us I can't sit here and tell you exactly you know what I can share with you how the deals work and we get on a webinar, but I can't tell you exactly what you're going to make. I can't guarantee anything to you. I can't hear advertise a certain deal because there's rules against that. But if you're interested, man, in parking some funds and making uh, some sound investments that are documented, let's have a conversation. That's what I got to say. What do you think? I think that's very well said, man. Very well said. Uh, so going back to Baker, he said that he did talk to you, remember? Because maybe it was too late in the evening for you to forget. So, I don't but, know. But you gotta figure that out. I just want to know where the emails are at, brother. Yeah, so hit him let, up with the emails. Let me uh, send you my email, man. I'm sure he has it, man. Uh, so, again, guys, so this is um, this is our first time going to our this podcast on Home Buying, Home Selling Association. And uh, I think the second thing, too, is we also um, we tried it once in the beginning, and for some reason we had technical difficulties, uh, but we got it right the second time. Um, if you guys can help us grow the association because we want to start doing the podcast on this platform and not from solutions, which is solutions is the page for the company where it's more for the consumer or what exactly we do as buying and selling real estate. So if you guys can help us with that, Charles and I will be very grateful for that, guys. So once we're done with this podcast here shortly, uh, if you can go on there, go to the association and invite members 
Um, I'll put it on your screen now so you can see it one more time before we start wrapping up. Uh, so make sure you, you join Home Bottom Center Association. That's where we'll start putting our content value to real estate investors. Um, if you haven't done so, you can visit turnupthehustle.com uh, where we have more education, more content, and where you guys can see what type of tools we use and uh, how it benefits our company. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. On Instagram, it's at Mike underscore HPHS, at Charles underscore HPHS. All we want to do, guys, is provide content, provide value. Um, we want to provide our experiences that we've done, share your guys' experience on what you guys have done, um, and see if it helps, even if it helps one person close a deal, whether it's a $500 deal or a $25,000 wholesale deal, that's what Charles and I, at this point, now that we've closed deals and got apartments and sub twos and reps, that's what we want to, we want to give it back. And uh, one of the best ways we can give back is the association, guys. So um, from now on, keep that in mind. Keep that for next week, next Wednesday at 6.30. We'll start going live from Home Bottom Center Association. So you need to make sure you join it. And again, guys, we can help us out uh, by having people, uh, inviting people to the association. Yeah, man, it's very important. Um, does anybody have any questions on JV, man? Uh, you know, uh, if you don't, I, I just have some, I'll share some stuff with you guys. You know, you don't just have to JV on, on flips, fixing flips, which is what most people think of, or wholesales. You know, you can you can JV on on funds, on you can JV on on uh, on providing you know data, providing uh, systems, you know, to individuals who are willing to work you know so so it's not just fixing flipping there's a lot of stuff you can do um, we do a lot this is something we don't talk about a lot but we do deals where we find individuals that are behind eight that have been in their house for like eight to nine years it's not really a deal because it seems like it's a deal because they may have thirty to forty thousand dollars worth of equity but when you're in a property for eight nine years it's tired so usually you know, those type of homes, you know, especially if they're in your home, you're still going to have to invest at least about $10,000. You know, let's just say they're behind 18, so now you're 18, into 18. I'm going to round up, so let's just say they're closing two, so now you're into 20. And then, and then let's just say that you're planning on taking that property sub two. Maybe, you know, you got to pay, you know, four or five, six months of payments. So it gets, you know, it, it's not really a deal, man, you know, because you're, you're, you're basically eating up all the equity. But what we do, what we do do, for those of you guys who might be interested in this, we take position in these deals. Why not keep the family in the house? Reinstate the deal. So, so people ask us, well, how do you reinstate the deals and keep families in the home? Well, keep this in mind because people have asked me this. They say, Charles, you always say you don't keep anybody in the house when you do a sub two, and that's true. We don't. Because how the hell are you going to get them out if they stop paying? And you just invested eighteen thousand dollars to catch up their note. You go into a, you, you try to take that to court, and how are you going to get them out? You're not. That's why you got to get possession of the property. But when you're keeping people in the home, and this is something that we do, and we don't talk about it a lot, we will take position on a, on a property. We give, well, you got to give the homeowner the option to pick his own appraiser or, 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 or broker to do BPO, give him the option to pick which, which one of those. Um, there's, an agree, there's an agreement on what the current equity is we're buying in most cases half that equity and doing uh, making an agreement which I won't go into right now but we get into an agreement with them to purchase either half in most cases in some cases three quarters or five eighths um, never a quarter of the future appreciation how do we enforce it that's for a webinar that we're going to drop uh, so so basically what we're doing is we're taking down deals and we're putting them in the Putting them in, uh, putting them in the pocket, and you can JV with you can JV on those deals with investors, right? Now, now the the objective here is to go long term, right? So you got to bring in an investor or yourself who's willing to park those funds for some time, but the payoff is in the future, because one, you're capturing. Your, so, for example, if somebody has forty thousand dollars worth of equity, and you're taking half, and you invested ten, well, you can you made ten. But the payoff is in the appreciation you're capturing. And whoever's interested in doing those deals or being involved in those deals with us, man, hit us up because those are, those are, they're all day long, man. Let's put it that way. All day long. So we've got some, uh, some two questions going on here. So William's on there saying that he's getting better 
with the sub two owner finance system. Uh, he just did his, uh, I guess, first owner finance deal. Uh, so now he's creating his rental portfolio. So congrats to you, uh, William. Uh, we can be of help by all means, let us know. Ricky, uh, thank you for this information. Mike and Charles, so far every live I've watched has been great info. We appreciate the support. Uh, Chris is on here. Chris, uh, man, Chris is on here and he has a question. With today's economic situation, are we lowering our search criteria, uh, such as principal balance and monthly PITI? Oh, man. That's kind of a tough question to say. I mean, it's a sub two question for, for sure, but. Can I answer that? Yeah. You want to answer? No, go ahead. Here's the deal, man. When it comes to sub two, I don't care. We've always done we've always done sub twos with no equity anyway. You know, because we concentrate on new, newer homes. And let me tell you something, man. If you're in the business right now and you understand sub twos, and you have someone you can JV with, JV with that can back you up, because it does sometimes take some money. I really think, man, that in the next few months, there's going to be so many deals. That's why we're raising capital. There's going to be so many deals. To take down, and and, and let's, let's let's go ahead and rephrase that. So many people you can help out, yeah. and, and and if you're looking at it from the other vantage point, take down. Um, that uh, it's going to be crazy, man. So so uh, we don't care about uh, a sales price on a sub two because we're not we're not buying anything, brother. So keep this in mind. I've been saying this to a lot of people. We say this in the office, and I'm sharing it with you guys. When we're doing a sub two, we're never buying anything. We're not there to buy. We will inform them. That we buy cash, cause we have we bought many properties cash, and that's not a, that's a fact. But I'm also letting them know that we have options, and 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 so, Mr. Seller or Mr. Owner, um, we are we are interested in this property. We do buy properties cash. We also have options, and 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 uh, these options to you are, are are not for everyone. Not everyone qualifies. So I'd like to see your, your current documents. Do you have your current mortgage statement? Do you have a range statement? Do you have this, do you have that? And that's only after building some report with them, you know? We're always trying to build report. We're always trying to create either a physical tie down, right? We, we're gonna take something, make copies, or create an emotional tie down, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's very important because you, you know, most people don't care what you want. They, they, want to, they only care about what you can do for them. And they care about, do you have a solution for them? And so your job is to let them know, yeah, man, if you have the funds to buy cash, and anytime you put a contract in, you should have the intention to take that property down. And yeah, we do buy cash. And, and we, we have purchased some, some, some properties that could have gone sub two cash. We've done that. And, and but if you can take it sub two, you wanted to see those documents. And, and so the, one of the things that we always say is, hey, Mike, we do buy cash, brother, but we also have options. So I've already let him know. By the time I get to his house, he's military. I'm ex-military. I'm gonna be talking about military with him. I'm gonna be creating an emotional tie down because I need him to. I need him to allow me the opportunity to share with him what I want to do. And if I just go at him right away and just start telling him what I want to do, what's gonna happen? He's gonna shut down and say, "Get the fuck out of here," right? Because most people understand a sale. A sale is usually what cash or a loan. That's what a sale is. Most people don't know about this type of transaction. So hey, Mike. You know, not everybody qualifies for our program, but now that I've seen your documents, check this out, brother. And, and it's more effective if Mike looks at me, but, you know. So, you, are you ready, man? I'm going to get you all day, man. Go okay. ahead. No, I just got here, man. Go ahead, dude. What'd you Mike, here's the thing, man. Mm -hmm. We buy cash, brother. But I cannot buy your I cannot buy your house cash, man. Why not? You got to be straight up, know your stuff, and be confident, man. Because any sign of weakness, nobody wants to deal with weak people, man. Or people that are unsure. Mike, I cannot buy a property cash. Why not? Well, let me tell you. Because you owe too much. You owe too much, the property needs work, and you're behind too you're you're too far behind, you know, on this property. And I just I just feel that if I if, if I take this property down, you know, I gotta I, yeah, I gotta put all this work into it and and, and uh you know there's there's selling costs and, and, and rehab costs and the market's going down. What I will do is this part. I told you I have an option for you. And I said, no, not everybody qualifies. But this option is this. I'm going to take on your risk, which is this property, and the payments to go with it. You see? I never said to him, I want to buy. Now, he's going to say to me, well, I thought you were here to buy my house. I thought you were here to buy my house. Michael, I'm not here to buy this house because I cannot buy cash. But I'm here to help you. 
I'm here to help you out of the situation. And let me tell you why. And let me show you how. By this time, he we've already created an emotional relationship. And most people are not are, are not narcissists or psychopaths. So if you've created an emotional relationship with this person, they're going to listen to you. Why? Because they need a solution. And that's when you pitch your solution. Now, if it's military, there's a certain way of doing that. In Mike's ex-military, Mike, when you were trying to make, right before you got out of the Army, you were fixing to be an E7, right? E7. Right. So, Michael. Yeah. If you have to, if you, if you have to go to your next duty station, so you're in a position to pay two mortgages if you decide to buy another house somewhere else. Most veterans aren't. Most veterans aren't. Now, do you really want to entrust this, prop this property to a management company who's not going to really have any skin in the game, man, but what the 10% you're paying them? Mm -hmm. What if somebody checks up your house? Now you got to come back and fix the house. But the payments still got to get made. Are you in a position to do that? Um, no more paycheck to paycheck. Do you have security clearance right now? I do. Okay, if you, if you lose this property, man, the chances are of you keeping your security clearance are going to go away. Can you withstand that? Mm -hmm. Do you My want career. Okay, I'm not saying you're going to lose it. But it's possible you can. Are you trying to make rank, rank? Mm hmm Okay. You know, I'm not saying it's gonna affect your rank, but chances are when you're going when 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 they're when they're looking at you to rank you up evaluations. They're gonna do an evaluation on you. But not only that, Mike, if you lose this property, you're gonna lose your eligibility to purchase another property. What I'm offering you is a solution. And that is I'm willing to make your payments, I'm willing to catch up this this transaction, and I'm willing to make sure this property gets paid. You see? Now, it's a little more smoother when I'm not explaining to you guys what I'm doing. Because I'm explaining to you guys and I'm having to pick up. But if you, if you understand what you're doing and you, and you understand what this person needs, not Mike here, but, you know, an individual you're trying to help out, whether it's military or another individual, you'll take these deals down. And, 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 uh, and, and, and so for those of you guys who want to do sub twos, whether you're taking them down yourself, that's a whole other story, guys. You need to be careful about that. You need to know what you're doing. But if you're if you're gonna if you have uh, an investor who's willing to JV with you on those deals, you can capitalize on those deals. For example, people bring us deals all the time. We don't do them all, but we pay those individuals for those deals. And we pay them handsomely. Yeah. So that question originally came from uh, Chris, and Chris is the one that uh, messed up to us talking about that four hundred some thousand dollars up to. Yeah. Yeah. That was his deal, and uh, I don't know what he's doing with him, but. So I told Chris, man, um, a certain type of house I'm looking for, personal house. Right? I'm looking for a certain type oh, of yeah. I'm okay with the house I live at now. It's yeah. nice, you know, uh, to be modest. But I'm looking for something a little different. And I told Chris this, I don't know, a couple months ago. And sure enough, man, this dude calls me once a month. Hey, man, I found this up too. What do you think? The next month, hey, man, I found this up too. He's a magnitude. Yeah, up so Chris is, Chris is, so he's on here still. Uh, shout out to Chris who's still watching. Um, yeah, man, so I told him one time, man, and he calls me once a month, man, I got this up to this, and now, for some reason, it just doesn't pan out. For example, the three-car garage or get whatever it is. Well, why, why don't you guys switch, man? I don't know, that's, that's a conversation that me and Chris didn't have. Chris, why don't if, if, well, Chris is on here, so don't, don't get Crystal rod up, so my wife's on here. <laughs> and she's she's not upset, but it takes a lot to move, man, to... And yeah. we have four kids and a lot of stuff, and I got a lot of car parts. I'm a real big car guy. Well, let me let me be so let all me, the car stuff, man. And let me be, let me tame myself because if she's because yeah, she's, she's married he's married to my daughter, man. So I gotta be careful because I know how she is because she's like her mom. But yeah, man. Hey, Chris, is he on here? On here? He's still on here. Yeah. He's hey, Chris, brother, if you decide to sell that property, my boy wanted that property. Why don't you just switch? We'll work yeah. something out, man. Yeah, work something out, bro. Who's on? Jesse James is on here, man. So Jesse James, he, uh, man, speaking of this, this podcast was Joint Ventures, and uh, uh, and Alex Estrada is on here. I see he logged on. Uh, so shout out to Alex doing his thing. Uh, we're doing Joint Ventures with Alex, man. So um, I'm, I'm always open to Joint Ventures, man. Jesse James, I, I haven't forgot about you. I was waiting for your email uh, to talk about something that we're trying to do a Joint Venture with. So uh, and everyone else is on here, man. Thank you for appreciating. Uh, we appreciate the time. Herschel's on here, so... Uh, shout out to her. What's up, son? And my wife, she said she loves us. She loves me more. I love you. Uh, Is man, my wife on there? No, she's not. So, with that being said, let's kind of wrap it up already. It's been a little over an hour, hour and ten minutes or so. Uh, but the content for this, guys, um, one the, is joint ventures and how we how we can help each other. Not just within each other, but for you guys with other people in different markets. We joint venture before when it comes to apartments or, or uh, creative deals for sure. Uh, but virtual deals... 
uh, someone who's in a different market for sure. A joint venture is always beneficial um, because it makes both parties happy. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about the seller uh, who needs to sell that deal. They called us for a reason, or we called them for a reason. We say we can do something, and the end goal is to help the sellers out. And if he's at a joint venture and maybe give up some of the equity in the deal, and then by all means, uh, Charles and I were always focused on one, helping the seller, two, making something that nothing if, if that's what it takes to do a joint venture deal. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that we're really dabbling in, man, that we're really making a push for. Can I say this or not? I don't know what you're gonna say, so. You know what I wanna say, Mark. I don't know what you're gonna so say. So we're really, really, really looking into this and making some good connections and that's uh, bringing in some crowdfunding into our into the deals that we do and so that's a whole other conversation but what we're trying to share with you guys tonight is is not only JV man but pushing through growth don't let this COVID thing set you back you know and one way to grow one way to continue to do business one way to continue to knock it out and or and or survive is man Network and JV with some people, man. You know, and, and, and it just doesn't have to be deals, man. You can, you know, it just give me properties. There's all type of ways to get involved in transactions. And I named some of those a little while ago, so. So that being said, guys, let me put this info sheet one more time. Charles, let's go ahead and start wrapping it up. Uh, join the Home Bottom Selling Association. Like I said, guys, this is our first time uh, doing a podcast on the actual association where it is a private group, uh, which we're um, hosting the podcast at now. Typically, we did it on Home Models and Solutions. Uh, so I know it's going to take a minute or maybe a couple weeks for that crowd. All the following that we had on Solutions, I don't think they're all on the association. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But so, yeah, let's, if you guys don't mind, help us grow the association. Invite people to this thing. Uh, po post um, whatever content, tools, tips, tricks that you had on the association. It's not just for myself, Charles, or anyone on the HPHS team. Um, it's for anyone who wants to provide value. Uh, the associations to provide value to the whole community. Uh, so please, guys, help us grow that uh, association. If you guys haven't done so, uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook. You can follow us myself, Charles. Uh, you can follow Home Bottom Sun Solutions, which is our Facebook page. Uh, on Instagram, Mike at HPHS, Charles at HPHS, and, of course, YouTube. YouTube is Home Bottom Sun Association. Before we log off, I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, it's an Instagram thing. And there's an Instagram competition slash giveaway whatever you want to call it it's, it's more of a giveaway than a competition and it's called at recession to blessing it's a giveaway where there's 20 investors throughout the nation that specialize in different things like creative deals subject to deals uh, fire damage property deals uh, land development deals I mean a lot of crazy things in that recession to blessing uh, page if you want to call it um, and every day for the next I think 16 more days they're gonna give away uh, prizes such as coaching, mentorship, one-on-one uh, -on -one calls on that specific uh, category from that investor. Can you do the video that we did with our one? Nah, I would have to load this to it. So, um, and then the grant, one of the prizes in the end is two thousand dollars. So someone's gonna win two thousand uh, dollars on that prize. And Charles and I were fortunate enough to be part of this group. It's on Instagram, a recession of blessing. Uh, we give away our prize. I want to say two days ago. To a gentleman by the name of Charles, who I see he's on, he was on here earlier. I don't know if you're still on here, Charles. Uh, so Charles is on here, um, and he, that's what we want to do. So if you guys get a minute, when you guys go to Instagram, make sure you follow me at Mike underscore HBHS, Charles at Charles underscore HBHS, and then um, at Recession to Blessing, guys. So let me just expand on that. So, like Mike said, you know, the recession to blessing, there's no S in the middle. So recession to blessing, no S at the end. So that's an IG page that was created by uh, 32 investors around the country. Uh, and now these guys are from San Francisco to Delaware to Chicago to Los Angeles, Phoenix, Florida. They're from everywhere, uh, Los Angeles, Texas, and they're all doing. And they're all doing damage. They're all doing good. They all have special niches. Niches. Uh, they all do wholesaling also, but very special niches, things that can really advance the ball for everyone. So like Mike said, we all came together and um, everybody's giving away something. So I think tonight's the fourth prize, so there's still 16 chances. The grand prize is $2,000. Did you say that? Yeah. The grand prize is $2,000, um, but you have to follow the instructions. And I think I have 
the link tree um you still gotta go on on the on the on the, on the uh, you still gotta go on the site guys but i believe i have the link tree the the link tree thing here if you, if you want to talk michael i get this real quick yeah so uh one more time on that guys um put it put it put in a push for instagram so if you guys have any questions i mean that was uh why charles pulls up this link um there he goes patrick buys houses put it on there uh, he put recessionofblessing.com. Did he put the link tree? Win. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. But Patrick's on here, and thanks, Patrick. Recessionofblessing.com, where it says enter to win. There are instructions on there. Uh, one of the final instructions you got to do is enter your email address. Uh, when you enter your email address, that's how you'll get notified and get selected on who the winner is. Um, it's a real thing. We are we are monitoring Charles and I. We are monitoring it, so it does put it on there. Um, so Charles just posted the link tree, uh, which shows you what it is. You click that link, it should take you to Instagram, and it should take you to the bio on that Instagram and the instructions. Uh, instructions aren't that hard. Um, it's to, one, follow Recession of Blessing. Two, Recession to Blessing is following 21 individuals. Make sure you follow all 21 individuals. Tag three individuals in either post that you think that would benefit on a blessing. And then in that Recession of Blessing, in the bio, there's a link. That link is the same link that Charles just posted. Once you click that link, it'll take you to the, the link tree. You got to enter your email address. Uh, and it's very important that you enter your email address because that's the one who's going to be selected, someone with the email address. Uh, so make sure you follow all those uh, instruction guys. Recession of blessing, blessing given away from big hitters closing multi, multi, I don't know, a million. I mean, I'm sure there's a few. Well, all of them. All of those guys. I mean, but whether it's a traditional wholesale or, or a niche, like Charles said. All those guys have cracked seven figures, you know, so. They're all they're all doing big things from big time developments. They've all come together, man, to help out. So, so you guys need to follow that if you want a chance to win the two thousand dollars. But not only that, you know, you're gonna have a chance to to win some knowledge from some of these guys. I think there's sixteen more prizes. Sixteen, 16 more. Yeah. So you guys got sixteen more in the next two weeks or so to to get more deals or more chances of winning. Uh, I guess with that being said, Charles, today we talked about joint ventures. Again, make sure next Wednesday at six thirty. Uh, at Home Bottom Sun and Association, where we'll start going live on this on this platform. Uh, so please feel free to share next time. If you have any questions, you can always uh, log on and ask questions to us. If you have any content value, whatever the case is, by all means, go ahead and post it on the association. That would definitely benefit uh, ourselves or someone who's following this page. Yeah, and on Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, um, we're going to be doing late night chats. You know, um, hey man, I, I think they're fun. You know, uh, people are up late at night, so we're going to be doing late night chats to go along. Of course, we do the podcast every other Wednesday. We do it every Wednesday, right? Every Wednesday, I'm sorry. I'm going to brain fart, man. But we're also going to be launching some webinars, guys. Um, and we're going to be talking about some of the stuff that we do. And and some of those webinars will be closed webinars, so you'll have to register for them. And for those guys, don't forget, whoever is interested in uh, helping us grow the association, becoming moderators, you can count on us, basically. I'm not gonna say we're gonna be your full-time mentors, man, but we're gonna tell you right now, we're gonna give you some value. Not only on closed webinars, but you're invited to all the webinars we're gonna be launching, but you'll have access to us too, and we'll help you out um, to, the, to the extent that uh, you, you probably need. All right, guys. Well, with that being said, uh, thanks for everyone watching. Charles and I are greatly appreciative that you guys take your time on this Wednesday evening. Um, and with that being said, guys, here at Home Bottom Sun Solutions, we always make sure that we turn up the awesome. hustle.